In this video, we're going to look at the uh, treatment of malaria, basically the pharmacology. So, of course, a vaccine would be optimal to prevent people from getting malaria, but developing a vaccine has a lot of difficulties, cost, and I guess the different strains of the plasmodium species, and I guess the ever-evolving mutations in the genetic material also plays a role. So before getting into the treatment of malaria, let us again recap the life cycle because treatment targets different stages of the parasite's life cycle. The parasite responsible for malaria are the plasmodium parasites. The plasmodium parasite is carried by a female Anopheles mosquito. The female Anopheles mosquito is infected with the parasite. The Anopheles mosquito carries the parasite in its salivary glands as sporozoites. The sporozoites is a form the parasite is in when it enters the human body. During feeding, the mosquito will expose the sporozoites to human circulation. The sporozoites will travel to the liver where it will enter the hepatocytes. Within the hepatocytes, the sporozoites will replicate, mature into chazon, and finally, um, rupturing, releasing many merozoites, which is another form of the parasite. And these can be called the daughter parasites, which again, have to mature. So the merozoites then enters the hum human circulation, the blood. But just going back to the sporozoites, the different plasmodium species, right, they have different abilities. And there are four or five main plasmodium species. So, for example, the plasmodium ovale and vivax sporozoites are able, they have the ability to uh, remain dormant in the hepatocytes and form what's called a hypnozoite. And after many months or years, it will then replicate and then release uh, the, its merozoites into circulation. So now let's go back to the merozoites which are in circulation. So the merozoites are bad and they invade red blood cells. Within the red blood cells, it enters the ring, uh, it, will be, uh, it will enter what's called the ring stage. Um, it will then replicate to form a, a trophozoite and mature to become a schizont before rupturing, releasing again many merozoites the cycle can then continue. So, you know, you produce more merozoites, more merozoites, and yeah. Now the rupturing of the red blood cells is responsible for anemia and malaria. The rupturing of the red blood cells are also um, coincidal with the clinical manifestations of malaria, which as we know are the fever, rigor, chills, tremors. Now, going back to the ring stage of the parasite's life cycle, which is in the red blood cells, right? The parasite can also enter a sexual cycle where it can become a female or male um, gametocyte. When a new uninfected Anopheles mosquito then comes along for feeding, it can take in these gametocytes. The gametocytes will enter the mosquito's stomach the Anopheles mosquito is now infected with the parasite. Now in the stomach now of the mosquito, the male and female gametocytes, which have just been taken in, can form a zygote. The zygote will mature into a euconite, then be released by the stomach as an oocyte. The, the oocyte, oh, sorry, the oocyte then matures and ruptures, releasing its content which are the sporozoites. The sporozoites, as we know, will remain in the, salivary in the salivary glands until the infected mosquito will feed again. It will feed off humans again, and then the cycle, this whole cycle can continue. The mosquito can feed on another human, another person that is he healthy. And then if this person was infected, it will all, the person will obviously be unhealthy. Now, Malaria is a big problem worldwide, particularly in developing countries. In Africa, many children under age of five die to a malarian infection. 
Thus, it is very important. It is a very important public health issue. Aside from prevention strategies, there is also treatment option, as uh, which is prophylaxis prevention, or treatment when the symptoms arise. And we will now look at the drugs, the pharmacology drugs used for malaria, and their mode of action using this diagram um, we just drew. I hope this will help. So for anemia, I mean serious anemia, blood transfusion can help to replenish the loss of blood. Now let us look at the big drug class known as quinolones. To understand quinolones, we have to understand how the plasmodium parasite survives in red blood cells. So, so here's a red blood cell and here is the parasite. The parasite has what's called a vacuole. Um, which is important for basically nutrition uh, metabolism. Now, the red blood cell contains, the red blood cells are red blood cells, they contain many hemoglobins, right? And the hemoglobins, as we know, are responsible for delivering oxygen to body tissues. Well, the parasite within the red blood cell will use the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is metabolized by the parasite in the vacuole, in the parasite's vacuole it will break the hemoglobin into heme and protein. The parasite will use the protein for some stuff, but it's the heme that is important here. See, what happens is that the parasite uses heme for energy. While metabolizing the heme, the parasite actually converts heme into hem, um, hem hematin. Now, hematin is actually a dangerous chemical, so hematin is toxic to the parasite. So what the parasite does is that it converts hematin into a non-toxic form called hemozyme. So now the drug quinolo uh, quinolones, the drugs under quinolones, they actually target this conversion from hematin, which is the toxic, which is toxic to the parasite, to hemozyme. So these quinolones I'm talking about are quinines, lumifantrine, chloroquine, and amdioquine. Now, I hope I pronounced these right, but, you know. So these guys, these quinolones, these guys essentially inhibit hematin to become hemozoin. Thus, if we have hematin, thus if hematin is not converted, um, it will be, be very toxic because hematin is toxic to the parasite and the parasite dies. However, there is a particular strain of the parasite called the Plasmodium falciparum who has been able to develop resistance against chloroquine. See, what happens is that the parasite have been able to develop a pump. That pump, this pump pumps out the drug from the vacuole so that the chloroquine has no effect and the hematin can be successfully converted to hemozoine by the parasite. This resistance is known as chloroquine resistance. As the, as the pump, it specifically removes the chloroquine drug. So those are the quinolones. Now, all these drugs are related in structure. Just have to point that out. The next antimalarial drug targets the mitochondria of the parasite. This drug is known as atovaquone. Uh, look. The next anti-malarial drug, which I will most likely mispronounce, targets the mitochondria. This drug is known as atovaquine, atovaquone, and it targets the cytochrome electron transport chain in the mitochondria. Thus, we can say that atovaquine inhibits the parasite from making energy. Um, our own bodies also have cytochromes, but this is distinctive, this is distinctively different from the parasitic cytochrome. Side effects of atovaquine include skin rash, fever, insomnia, and nausea. Some plasmodium parasites have actually been able to develop resistance to this drug due to mutations in their cytochrome gene. The next antimalarial drug we will talk about are the ones that target food metabolism. The parasite can use PABA, P-A-B-A, and through the enzyme DHPS, can make folate. 
Folate can then be converted to tetrahydrofolate through the enzyme DHFR. Tetrahydrofolate can then be converted to th um, thymidine through several reactions. Thymidine will eventually be used for the genetic material of the parasite. Thus, if we have drugs that inhibit this process, we can kill the parasite. These drugs are also antibiotics and include um, sulfanamides, which inhibit the enzyme DHPS, and diaminopyrimidines, which inhibit DHFR. The parasite have uh, also been able to uh, develop resistance to these drugs through genetic mutations of the enzyme, making it different um, um, enzymes. Just, yeah. So going back to atovaquone, atovaquone inhibits uh, cytochrome, remember? And specifically, actually, it targets the sexual life cycle of the parasite, thus inhibiting gametocyte formation. So atovaquone targets the sexual life cycle or sexual cycle of the parasite. There is another drug that targets the parasitic liver stage. So this drug I'm talking about is known as, is called primaquine. Now, primaquine is a radical cure and it prevents the relapse of latent liver hypnozoites. So it targets uh, plasmodium ovale and vivax because these are the species, these are the plasmodium strains that um, can become dormant. Now, primaquine is contraindicated in uh, people who have glucose 6-phosphatase dis dis deficiency because it can cause um, um, hemolytic problems. And it is also contraindicated in pregnancy, like many other drugs are. The next anti drug we will look at, um, and it's a very important one, are known as art art artemisins. These guys are essentially inactive when they're given. And when they're given to people, um, they are activated by ferrous heme or free heme. So when activated by the heme, the artemisins, they create a carbon-centered radical, which will essentially kill the parasite. The free radicals formed kills the parasites in several ways. These free radicals will kill the parasites through damage to their lipids and vacuole membranes, or they will inactivate the plasmodium proteins, alkylation of heme, and also it will interfere with um, the conversion of hematin to hemozoan. Thus, it will increase hematin in, in the parasite, which is toxic to the parasite. So all in all, um, active arte um, artemisins is toxic to the parasite. Doxycycline is another anti malaria drug which you might remember as being an antibiotic. Doxycycline is essentially, is essentially uh, a protein synthesis inhibitor. Tetracycline, uh, another antibiotic and protein synthesis inhibitor, is also used for anti malarial treatment and prophylaxis. Its side effects include es uh, esophagitis and photosensitivity, and they are contraindicated in pregnancy. So now let us look at what to give to certain patients um, in different scenarios. So for example, we'll, f we'll actually mainly focus on um, P. falciparum because that's the main strain of uh, plasmodium that is associated with morbidity and mortality um, in the developing countries um, that have high prevalence of malaria. So, uh, so for uncomplicated P. falciparum uh, malaria, we would give a patient artemisins plus a quinolone such as firstly lumifentrine um, or if not lumifentrine we would give them other, uh, another type of quinolone or if we can't give them a quinolone we would give them artemisins plus a protein synthesis inhibitor such as doxycycline or tetracycline. Now for complicated P. falciparum, complicated is really when you have association of really organs, when the organs are affected and you would give them IV, IV artemisins or quinines. 
for radical cure, which is basically targeting the dormant stages of the malaria parasite, so we're targeting the ovale or vivax in the, in the liver, we would give them primaquine. For prophylaxis, we would give them, we would give a traveler, for example, a traveler, chloroquine. And we would give them chloroquine uh, uh, for areas which, are, which there is no resistance to chloroquine. So these are areas such as Central America. But if the traveler is going to places uh, that have that, where the malarian parasites are chloroquine resistant, we would give them um, uh, amivaquone or uh, another type of chloroquine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.